So we're going to move on to sort of the main reason that we're here um, chatting to you. We're going to talk about your film, um, mm -hmm. Weekend Wandering in the Outback. That Weekend correct. Wandering in the Outback. Just the Outback, I beg your pardon. Weekend Wandering the Outback. The Outback. <laughs> nice. So yeah, I just want to sort of begin by finding out where did the idea come from to shoot an in-depth BMX because it wasn't meant to be a documentary, but it has sort of ended up being well, but a film anyway. Mm. We'll get to the style of it later. Um, I presume that some sort of came off the back of what you were doing years ago when you first got into filmmaking in the first place. Yeah, so basically when I started working out in the industry full time, yeah. um, it meant that I was on the road for months on end, then I'd be back for a couple of days, then I'd be on the road again. Mm. Um, so I was very rarely at home riding, I was always editing in different yeah. fancy countries. But, <laughs> um, not that I saw any of it. No. Any of the country. It was inside of the taxi, inside of the venue, inside of the hotel, and then it was home again. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I sort of felt like when you're creating highlights every single day, you kind of want to be doing something artistic and creative for yourself yeah. to push your creativity and what you're doing to the next level. Because when you're working it day in, day out, you've got to produce the quality of work that you're used to producing. You don't really have the freedom to um, experiment yeah. or improve yourself. So I ended up um, deciding I really wanted to make a BMX film, because obviously my BMX passion and I've been doing it for years. Yeah. Um, so the original idea was to film uh, five BMX riders around England. And we'd sort of go, each weekend we'd go travel to the new skate parks and find different skate parks. Yeah. Um, but after two years, uh, I'd only shot a couple bits for it. Right. Uh, and I didn't have anything close to a film and it wasn't really going anywhere. Well, I was going to say, because it ended up being not set in England, it ended up being set in Australia. In Australia. Um, so how did that sort of, what sparked that? idea. Um, so with, with shooting five different BMX riders um, and you know trying to travel to different places in England, yeah. um, it's very hard to get the time, especially with me being on the road all the time, of course, to go and do this together. So mm. we ended up not having much footage. Right. Um, and it had taken two years to this point yeah. um, and I still didn't have anything really to show from it. Uh, and then I met Chloe. Mm -hmm. who was about to go off to Australia and so we ended up really connecting and I quite liked this girl so yeah. I thought you know what why don't I take my film out to Australia and film a BMX film travelling Australia in a van mm. um, and that would be pretty cool so yeah, I floated absolutely. it past Chloe and uh, Chloe was like yeah that would be really cool mm. so I ended up going to Australia to film my film there we are hence why the out, uh, weekend wandering the yeah. outback um, did your production plan need to change too drastically? Because obviously you had you lost. Obviously, you were going to be one of the five BMXs, mm -hmm. so you you lost four of those, but gained Chloe, photographer, and um, yeah. Uh, so did it have to sort of your vision, your initial vision? Did that change quite substantially when it decided to be taken over to Australia? Uh, yeah, because. As Chloe had pretty much already gone out to Australia, and I hadn't been saving up for this at all, <laughs> I suddenly had to sell, near enough, all my kit. Mm. Um, I wouldn't say downgrade it, because I ended up getting cheaper kit, which actually had the capability for more slow-mo and 4K. Okay. Um, which is a testament to how quickly technology moves nowadays. Yes. Um, it was a fraction of the price. <laughs> but and then by selling all my old kit, I could then buy tickets to go out to Australia. We could buy a van, and we could fund seven months of travelling just yeah. off of the sold kit. By changing the uh, idea so drastically, yeah, uh, and having sold all my kit, I then sort of it wasn't till the airport that I realised that I actually didn't know what I was going to shoot out there. Oh right. So, <laughs> While I was waiting for my plane to arrive, mm. I quickly put together a brief script of how I wanted the sort of journey to go, the sort of like the peaks and troughs of the narrative. Right. Um, 
And then when we arrived in Australia, well, when I arrived in Australia, met Chloe out there. Yeah. Uh, we then set about filming it. I see. Okay, so it, I mean, largely it was. You, you probably had to improvise quite a lot in, in, in a sense, or you know, you weren't not quite back at square one uh, going over to Australia, but I mean, just off this brief script, and then you were just sort of planning, you know, more and more at, while you were there, really. Is that is that's probably the best kind of way of putting it? Would you, would you agree? Yeah, I re wouldn't recommend this style of shooting to anyone. Really. <laughs> no, I um, can imagine. Not. Because it was kind of. You're knocking up a story in a airport mm. and then you're going out and traveling this country that you have no idea really what's going to happen yeah um so you end up kind of shooting loads and loads of footage because you're so excited because there's so many beautiful views and yeah it's so incredible um you end up with all this footage but you have no idea how to piece it together because mm. your original story suddenly you know the one minute montage of traveling becomes this half an hour feature mm. film yeah yeah um so what I ended up doing was I ended up with this kind of clash between a f film where I've got this sort of narrative where people are talking as if they're in a film, you know, the dialogue yeah. sort of scenes, with all this montage stuff, mm. with the BMX stuff. So it wouldn't come together in the story that I originally envisaged. Yes, yeah. Because <laughs> um, I was going to ask you actually, and this is where we come to the style. Um, side of what I was going to uh, talk to you about because the end result mm. has be has become a sort of a, a documentary come travel log come behind the scenes making of mm. film all sort of blended together into this fantastic interesting unique hybrid mm. and of course that wasn't your original plan at all, was it? No. <laughs> no. You had a sort of a, more of a narrative, mm. as you as you were saying, a sort of an, a, a story in mm. mind. So, I mean, how did that sort of how did that transformation come about? So, um, like one of the reasons to sort of self justify why I was going out to Australia to film this instead of just staying in England and waiting for Chloe to come back mm. was. I knew that I wanted to break into the film industry at some stage of my life. Yes. Uh, and obviously with events video production, it's very different to the film industry. So mm. I wanted to go out and film my own film, which is why I came up with the script and then I shot it as if it's a film. Yeah. Um, so then when I pieced it together and I had all this excess footage, it wasn't coming together like a film. Right. Um, so it felt like I was piecing bits together like with band-aids and I was trying to make that work with that work and then I was trying to have an overarching peaks and troughs kind of yeah. struggle story. Um, so I made a version one in uh, 2019, January, about yeah. a year ago. Oh, wow. Um, that I then took to... The director of the feature film that I worked on when I first finished university. Oh yes, because um, I stayed in touch with him over the years. Of course. Uh, so I could get his sort of feedback on how I could improve it and make it into something that I'd be confident enough to show people. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said the editing was really good, the uh, camera work was really good, and the grading was really good. But mm. um, the story, story needed some work. I see. Okay. So he was. Uh, very generous, uh, delicate at the beginning of it. Yeah. Um, but the more, because I was there to learn, so the more I asked questions from him, the more feedback I got off him. So yeah. one of them was um, the fact that I felt my BMXing was very weak. So because I knew that I was a lot better, but because we were driving for days on end and you're on a strict sort of budget and time schedule. Sure. So you end up riding a skate park in 35 degree heat in the middle of the day for two yeah. hours and you've got to get some footage that's worthy of going in a film yeah and you've got to stay <laughs> on sunburn yes um so we we didn't get any of the great bit next footage that i thought i was capable of yeah so the whole film revolved around this struggle right so my director friend he sort of said i'm not seeing any of that struggle i'm seeing a guy doing some cool stuff on his bike enjoying himself like, yeah. where's this struggle coming from that you're talking about? And then he was sort of saying that it's the audience that will be interested. So if you're comparing yourself to other BMXers, then of course you might look like you suck. Um, <laughs> but most people are just going to enjoy watching a guy riding a bike in Australia. Um, yeah. 
and he said, try to pull it away from trying to be this clever film with all this sort of story arc and everything and just make it natural and what it actually was. Um, and so I took it apart and uh, a year later I had something that I was actually so much more excited to show off. Yeah, um, good.